It's that time again. This is Katni with your weekly Python on Hardware News. Every week, we put together the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. It is available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters. Or tune in each week to hear what's going on. Adafruit is continuing to operate as an essential business under New York City Executive Order to provide assistance with the COVID-19 outbreak. Most employees are working remotely, while a few are working in the Adafruit factory to help manufacture and ship desperately needed PPE to the surrounding area and beyond. This week, Phil and Lamore presented Pivoting in the Pandemic, about retooling the facility and processes to provide large quantities of and a wide array of PPE and electronics for medical devices in New York City. Check it out as part of Virtually Maker Fair. Adafruit is now shipping all orders, though COVID-19 related needs are still being prioritized. If you have been waiting to order, read Adafruit's announcement at adafruit.com slash open safely and head over to adafruit.com to place your order. Note, there may be a number of out of stock items as manufacturing has been disrupted. We suggest if an item is out of stock and needed, consider searching one of the many Adafruit resellers. In the US, DigiKey is suggested. Hackspace Magazine issue 31 is out and full of DIY, smart home, and internet of things goodness, including a few things related to Python on hardware. Meet the Maker highlights Liz Clark, maker, musician, author, sharer, and accomplished circuit Pythonista. Check out Liz's BLE synthesizer project. Learn more about drawing graphs with circuit Python. And take a look at the Pemeroni Enviro Plus Featherwing and its accompanying circuit Python library. All of this is available now at hsmag.cc. Virtually Maker Fair was held on May 23rd, sponsored by Make. This online gathering primarily featured makers responding to COVID-19. 24 hours of presentations, workshops, demos, and exhibits were held across all time zones. Adafruit had a strong presence, including Phil and Lamore's Pivoting in the Pandemic, hand wash timers using Make Code and Circuit Python with John Park, electronics and 3D printing for COVID-19 with Noah and Pedro, and DIY electronics for costumes and art projects by Aaron St. Blaine. Details and the full list of content is available at makezine.com. At Microsoft Build last week, there was a discussion on using the Microsoft supercomputer to train OpenAI on thousands of open source GitHub repositories. The dataset is used to help programmers generate Python code. Check it out on Periscope and YouTube. Knox is an open source command line tool that automates testing in multiple Python environments similar to Tox. Unlike Tox, Knox uses a standard Python file for configuration. For each session, Knox will automatically create a virtual env with the appropriate interpreter, install the specified dependencies, and run the commands in order. Find out more information by visiting knox.thea.codes. Mark has contributed a circuit Python library to perform altitude and heading reference system calculations. AHRS takes an accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer and combines the data to create orientation data. While previous implementations have been in Arduino, this one is written in CircuitPython for fast microcontrollers. Check it out in the CircuitPython community bundle. Translating CircuitPython is now easier than ever. CircuitPython contains control and error messages which can be translated. Translations make the project more accessible to a broader range of folks. Adding or improving the translations is a great way to get started contributing to the project. With the help of fellow open source project Weblate, we're making it even easier. This week, we had contributions to German and Dutch and the beginnings of Czech. If you write another language, visit hosted.weblate.org slash engage slash circuit Python, sign in and start translating. You can create a new account just for Weblate or sign in using other sites like GitHub, Google, or Facebook. Maker Diary posts to GitHub a hand-wired USB and Bluetooth keyboard powered by CircuitPython. SPQL wrote Chess Clock, a CircuitPython library for creating and controlling a chess clock using the Adafruit Feather M0 Express and two seven-segment displays. Code is available on GitHub. Use BLE to communicate between a microbit running make code and an Adafruit clue running CircuitPython using the underscore BLEIO library. Check out plus plus int on Twitter for details. Todd posts to Twitter the simplest of Eurorack modules, only eight components, including connectors, but gives you CapSet's touch control of a CV and gate, albeit at 3.3 volts, all controlled by an Adafruit Trinket M0 and CircuitPython. 
Find Toddbot on Twitter for more information. Mike posts an update to the multifunction Pi Portal information display, which provides calendar, weather, stock info, shower thoughts, and more. Hobby underscore robotics on Twitter has details. The first snackboard PCBs have made their way to the creator. In a project update, Keith lays out the last few steps needed before shipping the Lego Ready Circuit Python compatible controllers to backers. Visit Crowd Supply for more information. Cedar Grove Studios posts the Musique Concrete Cuckoo Clock, powered by CircuitPython, at the test stage. It features an Adafruit Pi badge connected to an Adafruit Cricut for Feather board. Check it out on YouTube and Twitter. Deshipu posts to Twitter the prototype Fluff M0 board up and running. Fluff M0 is a minimal feather form factor board with a SAMD21 chip running CircuitPython. Fixed wrote up a post about a MicroPython developer workflow in VS Code. Check it out on fixed.co. New on Tindy comes the FIDI board. It is billed as a small development board running Adafruit Circuit Python featuring six terminal block connectors and a quick connector designed for fast prototyping. It runs on the Atmel SAMD21 microcontroller. FIDI is also stated by the developer to be a derivative of Arturo 182 Serpente board, although not affiliated. Check it out on Tindy. The highly anticipated pairing of the giant board, Linux in a feather form factor which runs Python and CircuitPython, and the keyboard Featherwing from Arturo 182 may be very close to being possible. Visit Timon SKU on Twitter for all the details. Check out the Mark Educational Robot Kit with MicroPython from robotgizmos.com on Kickstarter. Electric Josh posts to DesignSpark upcycling an old project into a greenhouse irrigation system using MicroPython and PyCom. Zen Kong uses a Raspberry Pi to build a more belligerent Bender smart voice assistant. Check it out on hackster.io. Mark posts a guide to concurrency in Python with async.io on integralist.co.uk. Wolf explains null in Python, understanding Python's non-type object on real Python. Check it out at realpython.com slash null dash in dash Python. Christopher Bailey interviews Kyle Stratus about Python job hunting in a pandemic on the Real Python podcast. Find it at realpython.com slash podcasts. The number of CircuitPython supported microcontrollers and single board computers grows every week. This week, there was one new board added, the Alorium Tech Evo M51. Are you interested in adding a new board to CircuitPython? Check out the Adafruit Learn system for a series of guides about getting your board added to CircuitPython and circuitpython.org. There were five new Python on hardware related guides in the Adafruit Learn system this week, including Build a gentle yoga pose timer that chimes a soothing tone when it's time to move on to your next pose in this guide from John Park. And Zoom may be gone, but now there's JetPlayer for your dance party with this standalone MP3 player written in CircuitPython in this guide from Jeff Epler. The current number of CircuitPython libraries is 230. There are no new libraries this week, but there are a number of updated libraries. As always, visit circuitpython.org libraries to download the latest bundle. Included in this week's updates from the CircuitPython team, Dan started to work on using the Bleak Python library to implement BLEIO on host computers, analogous to how Blinka emulates native CircuitPython on host computers. Bleak uses Python async.io, which complicates how it can be called from regular synchronous CircuitPython code. He's studying up on async.io and a number of helper libraries. Jeff finished up working on MP3 playback in CircuitPython. It was a long time coming, but the guide was finally published for the Pygamer MP3 player, affectionately known as JetPlayer. CircuitPython has been able to play MP3 since the release of version 5, but somehow we never released a guide for it. I've been working with LED animations using the CircuitPython LED animation library. The library is designed to make displaying LED animations super simple, from blinking to sparkles to comets and more. Between pixel mapping and animation groups, working with large numbers of pixels in a matrix or other shape is a breeze. Initial testing showed that the way the library was written made it of limited use on the SAMD21 M0 boards, which includes the ubiquitous Circuit Playground Express. So over the weekend, we worked on a complete refactor of the library to split every animation into its own module, making it significantly more modular. The changes were successful. It's at least possible to run all but one of the animations individually on the CPX. Further testing is necessary to determine all of the limitations, but it is much better than it was. As well, we now have a solid API, and all additions moving forward will follow it. There's a guide in the works that should be published soon.
Over the weekend, Lucien took some time to work on a personal project, support for a type of motor called the Dynamixel. He's been a big fan of these motors ever since he used them back in college. They're easy to manage for more complicated robotics projects and have a lot of built-in checks to keep them from breaking under stress. He's put together a CircuitPython library for using the motor, a bit unpolished at the moment, which he's hoping to submit to the community bundle next week. To test it out, he tried it out on a simple robot he's calling Hermie, for Hermit Crab. It's not too sophisticated yet, but we'll see where it goes. This week, Melissa finished up a couple of small projects, including adding an uninstall option for the script that installs Pi TFT drivers on the Raspberry Pi. Some of the guides warn the user that they must not have kernel-level drivers in order to use displays with the Raspberry Pi, but there wasn't actually a guide that told them how to do it. Now they can easily do it by choosing an uninstall option. One of the reasons for adding this option was to lay the groundwork for adding Display.io to Blinka so that Display.io scripts can be run on the Raspberry Pi. It ended up being a bigger project than she initially thought, but she's been working her way through it. EuroPython 2020 this year will be an online conference from July 23rd to 26th, including two conference days with keynotes, talks, lightning talks, and poster sessions, and two sprint days with multiple sprint teams. Attending the conference will require a ticket, and participating in the sprints will be free. Check out ep2020.europython.eu for details. PyCon AU has announced they're holding PyCon Line AU in August. Check out 2020.pycon.org.au for more information. PyCon India will be held online from October 3rd through 5th, 2020. A call for proposals is now open through the 14th of August. Visit in.pycon.org 2020 for details regarding the CFP and the conference. Looking for more Python on hardware all week? Join the Adafruit community on Discord and check out the Help with CircuitPython and CircuitPython channels. We're over 19,000 strong and continuing to grow. You'll find a supportive, positive community filled with like-minded folks. Join at adafru.it slash discord. And that is your Python on hardware news for this week. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter or tune in again next week.